everyone. Welcome to episode number 629 of this here electronic engineering podcast called Amelia's Weekly Fish Fry, brought to you by eejournal.com and written, produced, and hosted by yours truly, Amelia Dalton. Embedded Software is the name of the game this week, my friends. My guest is Jacob Beningo of Beningo Embedded. Jacob and I are chatting all about what Jacob believes are the three elements of embedded software that everyone should know, and how each of these elements affect development. We also explore what motivated Jacob to develop Beningo Academy and where Jacob sees embedded software development headed in the future. So without further ado, please welcome Jacob to Fish Fry. Hi, Jacob. Thank you so much for joining me. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you for the invitation. Looking forward to it. Absolutely. Great. Okay. So first off, tell me about your background and what motivated you to develop the Beningo Embedded Group. Yeah, absolutely. So I have been working in the embedded systems industry for about 20 years now, and I've had the opportunity to work on over 200 different projects and in a lot of different industries. One of my favorites being uh, space systems engineering. But one of the things that I discovered early on in my career when I was a lead engineer at a startup and then had the opportunity to work on a lot of really cool, challenging problems. And then that company happened to go out of business because of some poor business decisions. I went to a couple of different companies. And at each of these companies, I discovered that even though us engineers love these technical challenges, it was very easy for me to realize that we were struggling. A lot of companies were struggling with modernizing their processes, their architectures, and their skill sets. And as I saw that going from kind of one company to another, I realized and saw an opportunity. And you know what? I wanted to help engineers and companies improve not just the technologies that they were developing, but also their approaches to actually developing embedded systems. And so that is really kind of what founded the foundation of Beningo Embedded Group. And what we're trying to do is actually to fill that knowledge gap for teams, for developers, mostly focusing on modern embedded software techniques, best practices, and just helping individuals and teams to grow their careers, their products in their development field. And uh, as I said, I've been doing this for about 15 years and had an amazing opportunity to work with and train thousands of developers over that time frame. Fantastic. Now, on your site, you mentioned that there are three elements of embedded software that we should know about. So explain to me how they affect development and what are these elements? Yeah, so getting the opportunity to work with a lot of different teams. Over time, I started to discover that there were commonalities that were coming up that teams were struggling with. And I realized that it actually kind of came down to, we love to generalize, right? Even though the devil's in the details. I found that there were three areas that really impacted how developers successfully delivered their products. And what it came down to was they needed to have essentially imbalance. I call these the embedded software triad. There's software architecture and design, kind of the first one. The second is agile DevOps and processes is the second one. And the third one is actually tools, development, and coding skills. And what I end up finding is that if any team has any of these kind of out of balance, then it's actually a higher statistical chance that they're going to fail or that they're going to deliver late or go over budget on their projects. And to kind of give you even an example of that, I had a company that I was working with. I'd gone in to help them with adopting agile methodologies. And so typically what that involves is you go in and do three to five days of training and you kind of coach them for three months afterwards to make sure that what you teach them kind of gets built into their development processes. And in my follow-ups with them, I was discovering that they had their processes great. They had all the skills they needed to really move forward rapidly, but they were kind of meandering. They weren't really moving anywhere and making the progress that I thought they should have. And when I dove in and, dis- and looked at it, their embedded software triad was out of balance. They didn't have a software architecture. They didn't have some type of roadmap that allowed them to see the entire picture of what they were doing. And so the interesting thing is that I'll go in and see with different teams that some of them are focused more on processes and, and their skills. And so the architecture ends up being their problem or they have a good architecture and skills, but their processes aren't in place. And so they don't have a consistency to their development cycle. You know, they might get lucky this time and deliver on time and next time it's a, a giant disaster and so on and so forth. And so balancing this embed software triad, I have found is, is actually kind of critical to teams being able to actually deliver on time and on budget. And of course, the quality level that's needed for the product. 
Absolutely. Now, you guys have a new Embedded Software Academy. So tell me about the Academy and why you developed this course. Absolutely. So having had the opportunity to work with a lot of different teams in a lot of different industries throughout the world, every team that developer that I have ever encountered, I discovered they want to deliver a robust quality product on time and within budget. And they certainly don't want to burn themselves out doing it, right? Working long 60, 80 hour weeks. Yet, as I looked at the data, I saw only 35% of the teams were actually able to achieve this. I realized that, you know what, in order to really have the right skill sets and succeed in this rapidly evolving industry, people really need a guide. They need to be able to modernize and maintain their skills. And oftentimes that that skill development is pushed aside due to the constant pressure of needing to deliver faster and cheaper. And oftentimes that makes people feel like there isn't time to actually learn more and stay up to date. And what happens is, is those skills stagnate. And the result of that ends up being kind of a self-building issue of delivering late and over budget. And so the idea here behind the Embed Software Academy is that I actually don't think that team should have to be delivering late or off budget, right? They shouldn't be wasting time aimlessly searching the internet for whatever skills or techniques they need. They need a reasonable program that they can follow to modernize their skills and deliver their projects. And so the Embed Software Academy, what this is essentially designed for is high quality training that's hand-on, that's targeted to help embedded developers and even full stack developers maintain and learn and grow their skills in embed systems development. And so what we're doing with the Embed Software Academy is really helping teams modernize and elevate the skills of their developers. And I've seen this actually working so far, even over the last 12 months, and with some of the teams that we've been working with, Companies are struggling to find developers, first of all, because embedded systems, it's not something that's taught at a lot of colleges anymore. There's a few of them. There's actually one here local to where I'm at. But you look around the US or the world, there's not a lot of embedded training going on at the college level. They don't teach C anymore. Even C++, you don't see taught at the college. And so you have people coming into the industry who are more interested in Rust or doing cloud or mobile apps and AI as kind of their main skill set. And so companies are struggling to find the right people with the right skill sets. And so this Embed Software Academy can be used to help them go through a self-paced program to learn the skills that they need, or I can even help them develop a program that's customized for their own teams that help them get the right skill sets based on the types of products that they're developing. And so this really becomes kind of a very great way for teams to modernize, stay up to speed and get developers who can actually do what you need them to on the project. Because today there's just so many different skill sets that folks need and uh, embedded systems is becoming harder and harder to find a, a good embedded systems developer with the right skill sets. And so we're trying to provide that on-demand training, some in-house training that's customized for folks. And then even we're starting to move into certifying developers with lots of assessments and capstone projects and stuff like that to kind of be able to prove that, yeah, these folks actually know how to develop systems. Finding the right people with the right skills has become a major problem in our industry. Absolutely. So what other services does the Beningo Embedded Group offer? Yeah, so certainly the Embed Software Academy is a core focus of ours in training developers and helping companies close those skill gaps that are necessary for them to deliver their projects. But on top of that, custom training programs that I've kind of mentioned. I also help a lot of teams with their embed software architectures. So going in and helping them architect what it is that they're building. A lot of teams are looking to develop platform-based systems today. And a platform-based system is where I'm going to develop a common code base that I might use for the next decade and launch several different products off of it. And so I'll oftentimes go and work with teams to develop the right architecture that's scalable and flexible so that they don't have to keep going back and reworking their systems. They can actually just scale and add new features nearly seamlessly into the future. Most of the time, people end up with a lot of technical debt. And what happens is, is it really slows down their development cycle. But helping them with that software architecture, it gives them that, I'll say a roadmap, even though the definition of software architecture very much evolves over time and can involve a lot of different things, including DevOps and build systems and many other aspects of development. So software architecture is pretty core there. The second area that I also help folks with is with their development processes. So I often do design cycle tune-ups where we'll go in and kind of see where people are at, see whether they're following modern practices or best practices for their industry. If not, we just kind of evaluate where they're at, kind of put that nice line in the sand and say, okay, here you are today. And you can save you know, X amount if we can improve these areas of your processes. And then we kind of give them a nice little plan to help them get to a little bit more of a modern development cycle. So embedded systems developers and teams, 
tend to sometimes lag a little bit behind the general software engineering field. And it's not necessarily a bad thing. The type of work we do is a little bit different, a slightly different pace. It involves a little bit hardware-based technical knowledge, but being able to help them progress and adopt those processes is quite rewarding to those teams. And then finally, I also do some general embedded software consulting and coaching. So kind of helping people solve problems. And as I mentioned, kind of coaching teams through their development process improvements, their skill sets improvements and things like that. All right, Jacob, let's get out your crystal ball. (laughs) Where do you see (laughs) embedded software development headed in the future? Yeah, so there's so many different possible paths for embedded software development in the future, but there's certainly some things on the horizon that I think are going to happen, okay? First of all, the big question that everybody always probably has right now, is AI going to take my job and, and take over you know, all of our coding and all of that sort of thing? And as far as I believe, I think the future of embedded is going to be leveraging AI to help assist and accelerate our development. Where it is today, I don't think it's replacing anybody's job. It makes too many mistakes, but if you take... AI and even machine learning that can be deployed into a system. But if you take AI and you pair it with someone who is a skilled embedded software developer, it only makes them faster and can help improve the software that they are developing. And so I see AI assistance being a big part of the embedded software development cycle in the future. I also see Zephyr RTOS probably becoming one of the dominant open source RTOSs in the near future. I think there is a lot of support behind the open source movement. And I think Zephyr tends to be snowballing right now with the amount of support that it has. I know we're doing a lot of things training wise with Zephyr and it's very exciting to see the things that are happening with Zephyr itself and also within some of the different industries like automotive and consumer electronics that are using Zephyr. Even seeing it in some space systems uh, work as well. A third area is I do see a major modernization of how embedded systems are built. I think AI is a big part of that, but I also see a revolution in how we build our systems software-wise. There's a big push into Visual Studio Code and kind of customization of our own build systems versus using vendor-supplied systems. Modernization of software architecture to be more scalable and reusable. There's DevOps, which is heavily being adopted right now. We've been having lots of good conversations on LinkedIn about DevOps recently. And so Lots of developers are finally starting to to adopt those practices, which really helps with automation and analyzing software in a much more automated or streamlined fashion. There's skill sets like test-driven development, which I think has finally gotten hold, and we'll see a lot more of that, along with functional simulation, which is a personal favorite of mine. I think we'll see a lot more simulation off of the hardware as time goes on. And then maybe finally, people actually using metric scoreboards to keep track of how their development is progressing. Those seven things I just talked about, I call that embedded software modernization. So those are the key areas that I see really being updated and evolved in where I think the industry is going, at least improvement wise, at least over the next couple of years. Sorry to disappoint the Rust fans, but I think as cool as Rust is, it'll be a long time in coming before it's a major force within the embedded industry. All right, Jacob, it is time for your off-the-cuff question. So if you could have one meal right now, it doesn't matter if it's on the other side of the world, you need a passport to get there, what would you have? Yeah, so I think I'm going to go with some uh, moussaka, some uh, Mediterranean food there with uh, maybe some rice and some vegetables. So, Mm, And and of course, you can't forget some baklava on the side. Yes, (laughs) Yes, <laughs> that sounds wonderful. <laughs> well, Jacob, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Well, that's all I've got for this week's Fish Fry. If you'd like more information about Beningo Academy, I've included a couple links below the player on this week's Fish Frying page on eejournal.com and in the description in this week's YouTube episode as well. Hey, have you checked out EE Journal on social media yet? Well, you should. You can find us at facebook.com slash EE Journal. If LinkedIn is more your thing, I dig it. You can follow us or me on LinkedIn as well. And we're on Blue Sky Social and Mastodon too. And we have a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash eejournal. Folks, it is chock full of all kinds of techie videos, including our very popular Chalk Talk webcast series, hosted by me, and our new animated series called Libby's Lab. Also, you can subscribe to our EE Journal YouTube channel as well. 
You probably already know that. <laughs> also, make sure that you subscribe to this here podcast on Spotify, Podbean, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, or just about any other podcasting platform to listen to some exciting upcoming episodes. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. If you know of any cool new technology or hack you just want to chat, shoot me a line at Amelia, that's A-M-E-L-I-A, at eejournal.com, or post a comment on our forums on EE Journal for the week of April 25th, 2025. I'm Amelia Dalton, and you've been fried.